Hello and welcome to Simon Says Artwork. In this video I'm going to be doing a real toned paper. I quite like this mid-brown because it gives you the opportunity to use charcoal for the shadows and chalk for the light. So all right let's get started. Well, when it came to this session, I had already done some warm-up drawings that you can see in the top right. And I wasn't too sure how to go about this next pose. It was quite an interesting one and it was a fairly long pose. So I use these charcoal pencils and I start to get the darkest parts, which is what I always recommend if you're not going to draw outlines and you're going to try and just draw um, the tonal values immediately, which is what I quite like to do, then I do recommend going for the darkest parts that you can see straight away. And for me, the darkest parts that I could see was the hair. So I started to draw the hair from the top of the head and the hair which curled over the shoulder and, um, and round to the front of the body. So that's what I started off with. Now I did get a bit of a curl for the um, shoulder on the outside, but that's something which you can either cover up with some... Um, outside shading you know for the um, behind the actual model to make it pop out or you can try to pull it back a little bit by either um, introducing some tone to the skin for the shadow areas or to uh, try to rub it out a little bit which I try not to do but you can. Now it did take quite a while to box off parts of the pose but I was trying to be as quick as I could so Getting bits of the uh, shape of the hair and the jawline really help to establish where you're looking at for the, uh, the pose and the model and where things are situated on the body and on the face. Now, part of this will be just feeling your way through proportions and trying to get things looking about balanced and, and the right sizes. And that can be a bit of push and pull. By push and pull, what I mean is you'll make a mark somewhere and then if you find out that that mark's not quite right, then you'll um, make the correct mark and then try to compensate by um, putting either darker marks in the right place to lighten the marks that you've already made or to rub it out or push things over another way, which is uh, something which you can do with a certain amount of tricks. For this one at the moment, I'm just trying to establish with some mid marks of where things sit and then committing to the darker parts with uh, with some bit more pressure, which is what I did underneath the hair and what I'm doing underneath the jawline there. Once you're happy with where things are, you can really start to commit to them, but you are then committing to darker marks, which are harder to pull back. So you have to be fairly confident if you're doing things like that. Either that or you don't mind having a finish which is somewhat rough. And you don't always have to go for accuracy. There are several different ways of doing life drawing. And some of them are a lot more expressive and free. And others are more accurate and carefully rendered. This is a little bit of both, really. I was still in university at the time, so I wasn't sure what I was going for. Because university really pushes uh, making very uh, loose and expressive marks and I was still trying to learn how to do uh, more careful measured marks so I was still listening to what university was saying to me but at the same time I had this um, admiration for people who would take the effort and you know put their energy into trying to be a lot more careful and precise with their mark making I don't really go for photorealism, but I was definitely trying to get things looking somewhat accurate to a certain extent. It's somewhere in between a clean and accurate drawing and something a bit more uh, impressionistic, which is to say um, looser and messier. So that's what you kind of get with this drawing and with a lot of my work, because it is my preference. At the same time, I would like to improve upon the accuracy and how clean I can draw things if I want to. But I often find that I'm somewhere in the middle, just as I am with this. It's not the worst thing. Some of these things are, you know, trying to um, to practice my confidence, just like those marks that I made for the sides of the chair. That's good for doing also with um, 
the marks that you make for the model. If you can do big swooping lines and use your shoulder to make the marks instead of using your wrist or your elbow, then you will find that you have a lot more interesting shapes that you can come up with and the marks that you're making will be a lot more um, just interesting to look at and it will seem a lot more confident and professional than what it does when you're doing little um, just really small dash marks that you're trying to build upon, which is what everyone does when they're not confident. Now there's parts of complicated uh, sections of this pose, as you can see in between the chair was like little windows through which you could see parts of the model. So I was trying to draw those based on the measurements that I could see. And it was quite nice to have the chair to show different measurements so that you could try to figure out the proportions a bit more accurately, but it was still very tricky. And part of what is interesting and valuable about life drawing is to try and familiarize yourself with what you're drawing quicker than what you used to, because a lot of the time it's just very difficult to become relaxed and to actually make a start and try to get something down which is somewhat measured. Now I never use a grid as you may have noticed, it's not something which I appreciate in my own practice because I think that trying to train your eye to get proportion better is really valuable. But other people use grids and they get a fairly good uh, finish as they will because it obviously gives you that sense of uh, measurement and accuracy. But I do believe that there is um, a lot of uh, value to trying to do things the hard way. And this is the hard way. That's why there will be inaccuracies and I'm not quite there yet. But I do think that it's partly to do with your state of mind. For me personally, my state of mind was, I think this was when I was in the second year of university. And it does make it quite tricky when you are going through something which is quite stressful and you have a lot of work on and you have a different social dynamic to try to negotiate. And it can just change how you approach drawing or painting or just thinking about seeing the world. And that was part of what I was dealing with when it came to doing these types of studies. Now, I was trying to um, do as much as I could, as quick as I could, as I've said. And I'm working fairly fast. I'm not taking too much time. And part of uh, what I'd like to practice more in the future is to take a lot more time looking and a lot less time drawing, because that is a specific um, discipline which I've learned to do with life drawing or I suppose any type of observation is to take that extra time looking and observing different angles and different um, measurements that you could make on the subject which you won't make if you just start drawing straight away so part of the problem which I face a lot of the time is that I will start drawing immediately and then I'll have to make corrections along the way because of the mistakes which you make due to not looking for long enough. The thing which I like about this pose is that it's got a lot of different angles to consider. I like the fact that the elbow is up on the back of uh, the backrest of the chair. I think that's a really good angle straight away, which cuts across the body, as you can see. It's just really nice. It's very well considered by the model. And not only that, but I don't know if you can see this, but um, that arm which goes along the uh, backrest of the chair, also the fingers drop down, which almost align with the other arm, which goes down to the seat of the chair. Now, in this pose, I introduce this uh, pastel pencil, which is essentially like using chalk, but um, it's a very nice one. It's a Derwent um, white pastel pencil. And I'm still very, um, very clumsy with how I apply this type of light tone to the drawings, but it's a learning process. So I will try to improve upon that along the way. But as you can see immediately, it does add a layer of interest to the study. It means that you've got the mid-tone of the paper. You have the shadow. You have the dark part of the hair. 
have the mid-tone as well, the darker mid-tone areas, which are the shadow underneath and on the neck there underneath the uh, jaw. And then obviously the light and the mid-tone light of the pastel pencil. The light being that on the shoulder and the mid-tone light being the, the white which I'm applying down the arm, which is just lighter than the tone of the paper, but it's not as light as the actual uh, top of the shoulder, which is having a more direct um, reflection of the, of the light source. Now I will say that when you've done some shading in charcoal, and then you go back over it with either a pastel pencil or with um, chalk, then you will get a slight blue uh, tint, which is not nice. So I try to avoid that, but that is something which happens when you're rushing, just like I'm doing here. As much as I have quite a long time to do this pose, because the paper is so large, I have a large surface area to cover. So I'm really trying to capitalize on the decisions that I can make as quick as possible so that I can apply more finishing touches after I've established all of the different measurements and marks for the proportions. If I were to do this again, I'd probably make different decisions, but I still quite like how different this uh, drawing is from my other life drawing poses. And already I think that it's got some interesting parts to it because of the different angles and the size of the drawing. It doesn't hurt. I don't want to be too hard on myself, but I do like to ask people, what do you like and what don't you like about the work that you're doing? What I do like is that things look fairly proportionate. The head doesn't look too small or too big. And the, uh, the angles of the pose work really well. And I seem to have captured that to a certain extent. But what I don't like far outweighs what I do like. What I don't like is my application of the dark and the light. I think they're both a little bit clumsy. And if I'd go a, a lot more careful with how I apply these uh, effects, then they would be far more impactful at the end. That's just my assumption because of how I'm looking at the finish. But I do think that the finish is still pleasing to look at. But I think that I've done this too rushed and I should have slowed down. And if I were to do it again, I think I would have really taken a lot more time to look at the model and to make sure that the decisions that I make were far more measured and considered than what they're being, because it just has a slight scribbly look to it, which is not what I aspire to, um, to refine, it's not refine, but to, uh, to kind of perfect or to, you know, um, create a body of work with with scribbles because that's not my my preferred style i aspire to have a balance of clean marks with expressive uh, overall finishes which is to say something which is messy but when you look at it it's messy um it's a messy overall image but close up it's got a lot of nice marks in there whereas i think that this is quite a tidy overall image with a lot of messy marks in there if that doesn't make sense, then just look at how scribbly I'm doing there. This is not nice considered shading. This is because I'm going down the leg on that diagonal from the upper right to the lower left. And if I were to do this again, I would do it on an angle, which is to say I would probably do it in the other direction, um, probably the other diagonal. The reason being is that if you did that, then you'd have shorter marks and you'd be able to show the contour of the leg. You wouldn't cover as much distance as quick, but it certainly wouldn't be as scribbly and you wouldn't have to rub over it with your finger like I've just done to try and soften it and blend in the marks to try and make it look a bit more acceptable. All of my shorter marks as well are still very uh, scribbly and they're just not given that time and consideration that I think is quite easy to do if you just take a moment and um, spend that extra effort making sure that the marks are uh, serving the overall piece. Now, I don't want to sound too negative. This is all quite difficult stuff. And if you're someone who's practicing or uh, hoping to practice life drawing, then, you know, don't take it that this is any kind of a failure or 
that I would criticize your work if I saw it and it looked anything like this, because I think people can make work like this and it really looks quite nice. I just think that because I have hopes for my own work, I see a lot more flaws in it. And I know that because of the process of how I created it, there are a lot of improvements that I could have made to serve my own interests as opposed to um, those which may look similar to others. But with the amount of light that I've put on there, I think um, it's going to have this um, interest in the brown paper, the charcoal um, shadow and, and then uh, the white. It's just nice to have such a, a range, even though I, I, not to sound too negative again, but you can really use range a lot better than what I'm doing here. The white isn't vastly different on uh, how I've used it, but it can be. If I were more careful and gentle with how I applied the white, then what you can get is a range within that um, tonal value of light. You can have from um, the brightness of the white that I've mostly used to a really light application like what there is on the chest, but it's not really um, separated like it should be. Now you may have noticed in this video, I'm actually clean shaven. This was um, in the second year of university and I've finished the third year and I've just graduated recently. So that's why um, my hair is mid length. It's, it's in a ponytail of some sort or a bob and um, a bun, I mean, or, and, um, but I'm clean shaven. And at some point soon, I am going to cut my hair and shave my beard off. It has been a long time uh, coming, but I'm waiting for an opportunity to try to use the different length of hair and facial hair. Um, so if I get to do that, then I'll share with you what I'm planning on doing, um, whether it works or not. And here I'm starting to apply some background tone, as you can see. The reason for this is because I drew the shoulder too wide on the right and I have black going around the shoulder on the right. So I'm starting to apply tone to the background so that I can hide some of that. And part of what I've learned from drawing with an ink pen before anything else. Uh, so I just go straight in with ink for a lot of drawings. The thing which I learned is to try and hide mistakes is just as important as to try and avoid doing them because mistakes will happen. And if that is the end of the drawing, then you'll be stuck. Whereas if you can do something to hide those mistakes, then you can salvage the drawing. But it's very textured at the moment, as you can see. So there is the opportunity to just utilize the fact that because I'm using charcoal sticks for the background, so yeah, that's, that's part of what's really useful about this. And it may not be the preferred technique. You may not want to do this. And this is something which I might not do in the future, but I think that some of that smoky blended effect looks quite nice. It almost looks like water's got on the paper and it's started to, uh, you know, kind of uh, seep into the, the paper. And if you can get that effect without having water on the paper, then I think that's quite nice. Unfortunately, your fingers do become completely coated in charcoal and everything that you touch is then uh, affected by that. So I'm trying to rub parts off onto the actual drawing because whilst I've got tone on my fingers, if I can apply it elsewhere, then that could be useful. So it's all a little bit rushed and panicked as you can tell, but I think the effect that I have at the end makes up for all of these struggles that I face throughout where I'm really trying to, uh, chase the finish but unfortunately applying tone to the background can be uh, quite time consuming thankfully because i was so quick with applying the um, marks for the the measurements the proportions it means that i've made up some time it's trying to now balance the dark behind the model because you don't want it to look as though it's um, dark in one area and not in another. If you have all of your dark um, background on one side, it will look imbalanced. 
And the best thing to do is to try to apply some of that on the other side to try to create a bit more balance. But this does become a bit more of trying to get as much down uh, as the as possible. One of the parts of this drawing that I think are quite nice as well is the wristband that you can see on the arm leaning on top of the backrest. The wristband that is there has a, a shape to it. It's, uh, it's contoured. Things like that to make them curved slightly shows the curvature of the arm and the wrist and it also shows the direction that things are turning in. If it was contoured the other way it would suggest that the arm's facing outward. Okay, that's the drawing done. Now, I must admit there is a few extras there where you can see the warm-up drawings, which were a bit shorter poses. And I thought it'd be nice to include those so that you can see all of the stages leading up to the larger, longer pose that I drew on this video. But I thought it worked out quite well. I mean, it was strange. I didn't plan it beforehand. It was something which I was working out at the time. It's not something which I had envisioned starting off. And if I had, I think it would have been much quicker than it was. But there we are, it turned out the way it did, and I think it was quite different and quite, you know, nice for, for, uh, for the time that I was given. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell, and I will see you in the next video.